Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I have my very special guest, uh, my son-in-law Taylor here, and we are finally getting around to talking about all the insurance questions you guys have. Um, I'm gonna be filming these both on my IGTV and YouTube in case one of one of them you guys don't have or whatever, you know what I mean. Um, so if it sometimes looks like we're not looking at you, it's because we're not because we're looking at the other camera. So anyway, I have written down all the questions that you guys had about um, the different, um, well, yes, all the different questions you guys had. And I'm going to read them and the expert over here is going to answer them. So. The one thing I want to start off by saying from the very beginning is this is going to just be um, guidelines for you. Um, your policy is suited to what you get. So my and Taylor's best advice is to make sure that after you go and get all these um, questions answered that you go to your own insurance agent and ask him if the things that we talked about are covered under your policy. There are all different guidelines depending on the insurance company that you have, the state or the country that you live in, and there are all sorts of stipulations in your particular policy as well. I will say that um, a lot of the coverages that I have personally are covered under my homeowner's policy. Um, that includes my luxury items. The jewelry items, however, need to be covered under a separate policy. So, um, but I wanted to get that out there. I don't want you to think that everything that we answer here will be true for your specific policy, because as I said, it is according to what policy you have, the coverages, the limits that you have, the state, city, um, or yeah, the company that you have or the country that you live in. So there, it's all different. So this is going to be a broad, um, <laughs> general, yes, general um, kind of guideline for you guys to have so that you have some questions to ask your personal um, insurance agent. And if you don't have a personal um, insurance agent, Sam is in the back there, totally <laughs> making fun of us. Um, if you don't have a personal uh, agent and you do live in Southern California or even Northern California, you can give us a call and we can help you out. Unfortunately, if you don't live in California, although maybe in some um, neighboring mm -hmm. states, we can help you with personal insurance. We are licensed in over 27 states for business insurance, but um, not for personal insurance. So if you're close, um, you can go ahead and give us a call if you need um, some help. But um, otherwise, if you're not in California or in a neighboring state, uh, unfortunately, we cannot uh, be your agent. Got that? Okay. <laughs> so, first of all, um, it says, are luxury goods covered under a renter's policy or a condo policy versus a homeowner's policy? Well, yes, it is. Typically, on a renter's policy, you still have a contents coverage so or a limit for your contents, whether your furniture, um, anything else that's covered under your renters. Obviously, what they like to tell me is if you tip that tip the apartment or condo upside down and it could fall out, then that's what it would cover. So if you do have some luxury handbags and you only have a renter's policy, you have to make sure that that limit covers enough for all the stuff in there. Yeah. So it, it is it is covered un, under renters as long as you have the the correct coverage. Perfect. Is theft cundered? Uh, cundered. Is theft covered under a basic home insurance? Yes, theft is covered under a homeowner's insurance. Now, if you lose it just because you lost it for some odd reason, I don't know why you would lose it, but if you did, that's something <laughs> different. But if it is stolen out of your car or out of your house, yes, it is covered. Okay, perfect. Um, and what does it cost? Well, that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. It, it, it really varies. I mean, how much you have varies. You know, if you have a l more than others, the more coverage you have, obviously, the higher premiums you're going to spend. So it really varies on what kind of limit you limit you have and how much you have. Right. So it's really hard to answer an exact number. Right. Um, why don't you explain um, what an umbrella policy is over your homeowner's insurance? Yeah. So the umbrella, what that's for is mainly the umbrellas for the liability. So if anybody slips and falls, if you have a dog bite, anything like that, or if you're in a car accident even, it covers your auto. The umbrella is on top of whatever your homeowners or auto insurance covers. So if you have a million dollar umbrella and your auto or your home maybe has 300,000 and you have a $500,000 claim, the umbrella will kick, kick in and cover what's not under the 
Okay. Under the home. So that probably doesn't really cover anything for luxury no. or anything like that. Okay. Not yeah. Not for but, the property. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, is video or photos enough uh, for proof uh, for the insurance company if there's a loss? I would say so. That really does help. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think a lot of the home, the insurance companies will. They will use kind of what you go off of and what you say, but the videos and the photos really do help them right. when you show proof of, hey, look, right. I did have a whole closet full of Louis Vuitton, I'm not lying, you right. know, so it yeah. does really help. That would be, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, and the other question that we got on this as well is, do you need receipts uh, for, for luxury items? And for the most part, you do not. Mm -hmm. um, Clark's uh, input, his wise sage input to us was, Insurance companies have been doing this for a very long time. If you go to the insurance company and say, oh, hey, I lost a $35,000 um, Louis Vuitton bag, they'll be, you know, they'll probably want a little bit more information on that. Yeah. Um, but what I do personally, because I do have a lot of items and I do buy secondhand or pre-loved, and so I don't always have the receipt. What I have done is I have taken um, pictures and I've documented um, I have a special file with pictures and or videos of the bag that I have. What I usually do is I'll take a picture of the bag and I'll write down the date code or whatever kind of authentication code it is depending on the fashion house and I will keep that. Um, a lot of those are actually in this book that I have. Um, I think the easier thing to do if you don't want to be, you know, an old lady and write everything down like I do is to do a video mm -hmm. and to speak it and then you can go through the video and talk about it. I do also want you to know that luxury handbags and jewelry are two completely different things which we'll talk about here in a second as yes. well. But as far as luxury um, handbags go, um, doesn't matter what fashion house, the best thing, yes. Of course, a receipt is also um, probably the best thing if you right. you know have a box full of receipts and you know or whatever. Or you scan them in. Yeah, or, or sca yeah. scan them in. <laughs> yes, you could do that. Yeah. Um, however, if you don't have that, don't fret. You can do pictures or video. You mm -hmm. can even just tell the insurance company what you have, but then you're relying on their input and not your own. Right. So, you know, I just, I, I always feel like it's better to have too much information than not enough Absolutely. because you want to, you know. Um, so that leads right here into the next question. It says, do I need appraisals or just receipts or neither? So... So, so. Well, for appraisals, not for handbags. You don't you don't need an appraisal for any kind of handbags or any of that. Shoes or clothing, you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but for jewelry, that's where it kicks in. So obviously, jewelry. I'll do a brief one. I don't know if we're gonna have more on jewelry, but the jewelry you want to schedule under a personal article floater. Now, what that does is that gives you more coverage than what your homeowners typically will give you. Typically, your homeowners will have a per item limit or some type of limit on jewelry. So maybe it's a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars what you want to do is schedule that and you can get more you know obviously if a rings obviously worth more than fifteen hundred dollars you're gonna want whatever it's worth so they're gonna want an appraisal from a jewelry jeweler you can you can go there and you can ask them for an appraisal and they can give you that that's when you'd want the appraisal to make sure like say your wedding your wedding your wedding rings covered and make sure that that's all properly covered because most wedding rings probably won't be fully covered under your homeowners. Right. If it's worth more than a thousand right. dollars or. Yeah, and let me be perfectly honest with you. With the amount of jewelry that I have, um, and you guys have seen it. <laughs> well, people on IGTV have seen it. Yeah. Um, I just recently went through and scheduled all of my pieces. Let me also tell you that is a pain in the ass to do, yeah. but so worth it because under your personal article uh, floater, um, depending on what your policy is and the coverage that you have, even losing it is covered. Right. And so as long as it's named and the value is there, it is absolutely covered. So that is really important to be very specific because I had May here in our office I gave her a list of all my jewelry and she came back with like 27 questions. <laughs> like how many carrots is it and what right. does it look like and all that. So. 
in comparison, jewelry is very, very, very specific mm -hmm. on your policy and luxury items, not so much. Um, you can go ahead and just name those things. So there's a really huge difference between luxury items and jewelry. Yeah. So it's really important that you do it. And I, being married to an insurance guy and also being in the insurance <laughs> business forever, did not have my stuff scheduled until like six, okay, about a year ago. Uh, yeah, that's my bad. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. The personal article footer, like say your, your center stone falls out, right? You know, that's the stuff that it'll cover that your homeowners typically would not. Yeah. Do. Well, they, so. you can, but then you'll get a $1,500 diamond. And that's <laughs> right. not going to cover a lot yeah. on, on your diamond. So, um, is there a minimum amount for insuring jewelry or handbags? A minimum amount? No. Okay. I mean, no. For homeowners, obviously there is a maximum yeah. uh, for jewelry, like like we were just saying, but for a minimum amount, no. I mean, yeah. you could do anything. You know, I scheduled my camera, I've scheduled, there's other things you can schedule under a personal right. article floater, and it could be as little as $1,000 up to whatever. So right. there's no real minimum. Okay. Um, is there a deductible? Under your homeowners, there is. Yes. There is a deductible under your homeowners. Now, you get to pick your deductible. So if if you don't want to pick a too high of a deductible that you can't afford to pay, but you, you could choose. Now, of course, the higher the deductible, the lower the premium. So you need to make sure you, that you're picking the right, right. right deductible for what yes. you could afford and what your insurance, yes. you know, you have to adjust your yes. premium. So. There is a reason that there are all those commercials on TV saying that you can get insurance for as little as like $20 a month <laughs> yeah. or $40 a month. That's what you're going to get back if you have a loss. Yeah. So just remember that. I completely know and understand that some people don't want to spend a lot on their insurance and that is okay and that is your personal right. Just know though, if you have a loss, what you put in is what you get out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a bummer if you're like, Bleh! so. <laughs> yeah. um, and we have time for one more question. Mm -hmm. um, it's do requirements vary state to state? So yes, they do. So yeah. all the insurance companies, all the states have different rules. and Like we see on TV all the time, these great deals for car replacement and stuff. And it's like, not available in California. Right. So right. California is a big one, but yeah, they all, all these rules and stuff, you know, most of this stuff will cover you state to state, but there is some nuances that you got to make sure that, you know, talking to your agent in their state that are familiar with those rules, ask them because a lot of times it does vary, you know? Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Taylor. I really appreciate that. And again, if you guys, um, I, I kind of, glommed the questions together. Those were the main ones that I got. But of course, if you have any other questions, not only can you ask me and I'll pass it along to Taylor or to our personal lines team, but uh, you can also follow Jackson and Jackson. Um, Taylor takes care of that Instagram and that YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, you can do all of that. You can ask any questions that you want. Um, you can even uh, also get a quote from us. Like I said, if you're in California or a neighboring state, we'd right. be happy to help you out too. But um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if this is YouTube, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also subscribe to uh, Taylor's channel. Yeah. He does insurance videos all the time and they're not like boring and stupid. They're like actually- <laughs> I try. Like, yeah, they actually, uh, he, knows, he knows what he's talking about. So anyway, but thanks for watching and hope you guys have a really great day. All right. Mwah.